In this video, we're talking about how to find the surface area of a right circular cylinder. And remember that when we say a right circular cylinder, we're talking about a cylinder where the base and the top of the cylinder are both circles, they're circular, and we have right angles or 90 degree angles between the top and the base and the side of the cylinder. So we've got a right circular cylinder, and when we have that type of three dimensional object and we want to find its surface area, we can use this formula. Surface area is equal to the area of the lateral side plus two times the area of each base. Basically we're saying here, take the area of the lateral side, the singular side of the cylinder, and then take the area of one base and multiply it by two because the area of the top is the same as the area of the bottom base. We can also break it down this way. If we look at the area of the lateral side, we know that the height here we can call h, and then the width of this rectangular side or this rectangular area is just the circumference of one of the bases. And remember, circumference is equal to 2 pi r. So really here when we say 2 pi r h, we're saying circumference times h or c times h. Since the circumference is the width of the rectangle and h is the height of the rectangle, we've just got length times height or width times height and that gives us the area of the rectangle which is the side of the cylinder. So this is the area of the lateral side and then the area of the bases can just be represented by the area of a circle. Remember that the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. So if we say that the area of the top is pi r squared, and the area of the bottom is pi r squared, then taking them together, the total area of the top and bottom is 2 pi r squared. So we really just have the area of the lateral side plus the area of the basis. So that's how that formula breaks down. And in this first example here, we're told that the radius of the base is 5 units, that the height of the cylinder is 4 units, and we've been asked to find surface area. So if we go ahead and label the cylinder we have here, we know that the radius is 5, so we can go ahead and say radius is 5, that the height of the cylinder cylinder is 4 and we need to find surface area. Well we're just going to use this formula here, we're going to use this 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared since we've been given r and h, so we're going to say surface area is equal to 2 pi r h or 2 pi times the radius 5 times the height, so times 4 plus 2 pi r squared, so plus 2 pi times r squared, we know r is 5, so times 5 squared. When we simplify here, we're going to get 2 times 5 is 10, 10 times 4 is 40, so we're going to get 40 pi. And then here we have 5 squared, which is 25, 25 times 2 is 50, so we're going to get plus 50 pi. And we can simplify and say that the surface area is going to be 90 pi, so we can go ahead and say surface area is 90 pi. Now if we wanted to give a decimal approximation, we could plug in 3.14 for pi. If we wanted to give a fractional approximation, we could plug in 22 sevenths for pi. But in this video, we're going to go ahead and leave our answers in terms of pi to give an exact answer. So the surface area of this cylinder with radius 5 and height 4 is going to be 90 pi. What about when we're given the radius and the surface area and we need to find height? Well in this case, we know the radius is equal to 3, so let's say the radius is 3. The surface area is 72 pi, so surface area is 72 pi, and we need to find height. Well, we can still just plug these values into our formula here and say surface area, or 72 pi, is going to be equal to 2 pi r h. Well, we don't know h, but we have r, so we're going to get 2 pi times the radius of 3 times h, and then we're going to add to that 2 pi r squared, so plus 2 pi, and r is 3, so we're going to say times 3 squared. When we simplify, we'll get 72 pi is equal to 2 times 3 is 6, so we're going to get 6 pi h plus 2 pi times 3 squared. Well, 3 squared is 9, 9 times 2 is 18, so we're going to get plus 18 pi. Now if I subtract 18 pi from both sides, I'm going to get 54 pi is equal to 6 pi h. If I divide both sides by 6 pi, I'm going to get 6 pi in the numerator to cancel with 6 pi in the denominator, and I'm going to get pi and pi to cancel. 54 divided by 6 is 9, so I end up with 9 is equal to just h is all that's left on the right hand side. So I can say that the height of this cylinder, if the radius is 3 and the surface area is 72 pi, then the height has to be equal to 9 units. Our last example here, we've been given the height and the surface area, and we need to find the radius. So in this case, we can say height is 2, so the height is going to be 2. The surface area is going to be 70 pi, and now we need to find 
radius. So again, we'll just plug these into our formula and we'll get surface area or 70 pi is equal to 2 pi rh. So we're gonna get 2 pi times the radius, we don't know that, times the height, we know that that's two, plus two pi r squared. So two pi r squared, r is unknown, so we have to leave that as r squared. When we simplify, we'll get 70 pi is equal to, two times two gives us four, so four pi r plus two pi r squared. If we divide through everything by two pi, so divided by two pi, two pi, and 2 pi, what we're going to get is, on the left hand side, 72 divided by 2 is 35, so we're going to end up with 35. We're going to get pi and pi to cancel. Here we're going to get pi and pi to cancel. 4 divided by 2 is just 2, so we're going to end up with 2r. And over here we'll get pi and pi and 2 and 2 to cancel, leaving us with just r squared, so plus r squared. Now if we collect all the terms on one side, we're going to have r squared plus 2r minus 35 is equal to zero. If we factor the left hand side, we're gonna get r plus seven times r minus five is equal to zero. So we get r is equal to negative seven or positive five when we set each of these factors equal to zero individually. But of course, remember that we're talking about a radius in real space. We can't say that a radius is a negative distance, so it's impossible for negative seven to define the radius, which means that r has to be, or the radius has to be, equal to five units. So in this case, we can go ahead and say that the radius is equal to five.